Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I am joined today with two of my girlfriends. We have, of course, Stephanie from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, and Shanti from both Aquarius Rising Africa and solutions by Aquarius rising Africa. So I will of course have all their links down in the description box below in case for some reason you're not subscribed to their channels. Now, especially with Shanti, because the first Aquarius rising Africa channel, you know, it to go got to uh, yeah. strict. <laughs> yeah. So she's re So if you guys have been wondering where Aquarius rising Africa went, that's where it went, but they have a new channel up. And of course, a lot of your stuff you are now putting on backup channels. What Rumble, Odyssey, do you have bitch juice? Rumble and Odyssey, yes. So we have, we on um, uh, Rumble, Bitchute, Odyssey. Rumble, Bitchute, Odyssey. Are we on Bitchute? I, I, I think we are. Yes, we are on Bitchute. And, um, <laughs> and now, but, but we're making Rumble our main channel. So. Uh, because yeah. we already had two two strikes on our new channel, so one more strike and we're gone. Um, but they do they do tend to I don't know whatever. But so yeah, I wanna I wanna just say find us on Rumble or Aquarius Rising Africa two, the Roman numeral two. Yes, yeah. yes, and so um, and I will again we'll put all those links down in the description box below, guys. <laughs> I know I have a backup channel on Rumble. I know Stephanie has a backup channel on Rumble. And usually when I have to put things on Rumble, I'll do an intro video to get you to go to Rumble. But it's probably safer if you just go ahead and subscribe to all of the backup channels on Rumble anyway. Because, you know, we're just kind of going day by day. We don't know what's going to happen. So we're, we're, we're so, you know, just in case something were to happen, just go ahead and get subscribed to our channels on Rumble. So we still have an outlet or you still know where to go to find our information. And of course, all three of us are on Twitter. I know Shanti also has the Aquarius Rising Africa page. I'll put that down in the description box too, because I do know that when something happens to one of our pages, people tend to freak out because all of a sudden they feel like they've lost contact with us. So go ahead and follow Stephanie and Shanti on Twitter too, so that you'll also get those notifications, those tweets. If something were to happen, you can just follow where their new material is now um, posted. So um, because right, yeah. so I have a new Telegram channel too, I can give you the link to as well. And do you have Telegram as well, Shanti, for Aquarius Rising Africa? Yes, we do, and for solutions. We're all over the show. Are we on Facebook? We're on Twitter? We're on Telegram. I'm Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. I post my videos on Telegram. So anytime I post a video, if you're following me on Telegram, I post it a little bit after it gets posted on YouTube so that people are aware that I did post a video. Telegram overwhelms me. I get on Telegram. I'm like, what's happening? It's just too much. Exactly. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so feeling the same, and I've been so embarrassed to even say to someone, I'm so happy you've said it because I look at Telegram and I go, oh my gosh. And then I, I'm forever being added to these cryptocurrency groups. I don't know how many cryptocurrency groups think I belong to them. I have no idea. And how do they just add me without anyone even giving them permission? Listen, I, don't know. Just, I don't know. It's too much, man. I'm like, I, I'm pretty good with Twitter. I used to be big on Instagram, but now I just can only really focus on one platform at a time because it's just yeah. like, man, it's too much. It is too much. But in uh, technology, well, we're Aquarians, uh, Shanti. That's not really, we're in, you're an air sign too. I don't know. I'm just like, we have beautiful, you have beautiful Mornay that helps with that as well. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just going to do my YouTube thing and the rumble and the Twitter thing. And that's like, <laughs> I was happy with not being part of any social media. And you're like, you must get, get Twitter, get Twitter. I'll post on Twitter. Now. Twitter's actually fun now that there's not as many bots and you can like say stuff on Twitter. Like it's getting fun. Yeah. It's getting fun to see other people actually speak the truth. Um, well, it's funny because I got Truth Social before I got Twitter. <laughs> I'm late to the game. I'm late to the party. Okay. Better, better, <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> better late than never. Well, I'm super, super excited. I requested that Shanti and uh, Stephanie come on to talk about a very uh, wonderful subject that we've spoken <laughs> a little bit about before. But um, as this is an information war and as this is a beautiful Great Awakening where we're starting to rediscover old um ancient symbols and information that perhaps has been hidden from us one of these symbols is the onk the onk and so i wanted to kind of pass the ball over to both shanti 
and Stephanie <laughs> to give us a little bit of a history of the Ankh. Now we've talked about this briefly, some other, like we talked about with the Merovingians, um, but I wanted to just give it its own episode because I feel like this is such an important topic. And I want to say again, I've said this a couple of times for those people who are watching that are going to get triggered by this. Research, research is not witchcraft. Okay? It, it is possible, as Aristotle says, whoever Aristotle was, um, to entertain an idea without accepting it. It is possible to learn something and learn about something and still not accept it, okay? When we reject information without actually looking at it, that's a form of censorship. And sometimes we say even censor ourselves. And censorship is never a good thing. It's never... Name me a time in history when censorship ended up being for the betterment of humanity. You know, mm -hmm. it's never a good thing. We, we need all the information we can get our hands on. And this is a beautiful beautiful symbol and so ladies which one of you wants to start we're just gonna wing it and let's see who lets you guys go into your conversation about the onk stephanie why don't the you general stuff about it shanti i know you've worked with the onk a lot more than me but i can go into the general stuff and then if you want you can elaborate on what i talk about it's so there's so the beautiful thing about the Ankh is it's got so many different meanings. Um, I know a lot of people have been turned off by this symbol when you start to look into kind of what the controllers have been using a lot of the Egyptian symbols for their own personal agendas. And so we're looking at like Isis, Osiris, Horus, and like the eye, for instance, and symbols like that as satanic. But um, Bryce, you always repeat this always. And you always say, you know, the devil can't create, he can only mimic. So that's exactly what um, what has happened here with the Ankh. So um, coming from a Christian perspective, you know, it, it's it's good to just open up your minds and, and do your research and understand that this symbol is actually very beautiful. This is not a satanic symbol, but of course the controllers like to take symbols that have beautiful meanings and invert them. So that's important to just know. Now, there's so many different meetings with the on, and I'm just going to go over briefly a few, and then obviously Shanti, you can elaborate because I know you've, like I said, you've worked with this a lot longer than I have. So first of all, the Ankh um, is a symbol of uh, female reproduction. Um, Bryce, do you have a picture of that reproduction? There's multiple so pictures. You Okay, so yeah, you have like <clears throat> the uterus, which is the top portion, the loop, right? That's where the, the the egg is fertilized, and the baby starts to. That's like a portal. That's a that's the portal between spirit realm and the physical realm, where the baby is. Then the soul comes in, and then you have this beautiful creation of new life, and the two, you know, the cross part. Um, is like where when we say that's like the fallopian tube area and then you have like the cervix where the the baby comes out um so that is one particular um symbol it's of new life okay you do have the symbol where it is actually the masculine and the feminine in unity which the church wants to make us think that that's a dirty thing. It can be used for negative sex magic, but there is also the positive, which God intended for it to be. Um, then you also have where the loop on this is like the spiritual, and this is like the physical the cross area. It's like the two conjoining. Um, Shanti, before we started to record, you said it really much better than I did. Um, so I'll let you elaborate like a little bit on that because you said it very well, like people can definitely understand. Um, so I don't know if you want to talk about that really quick because like, yeah, sure. Um, what I want to do maybe Bryce is we'll just also put a link to my website because on my website, there's a whole section that I've actually written on the Ankh oh, and cool. not just from it's, um, and not just from, it's uh, original origins, yeah. also from 
the way I've learned to work with it. So for starters, I mean, I would really like to say it really is a very sacred symbol. Um, let's just work with the, with the energy yeah. of it. So if you look at the Ankh, and I'm going to show you, you see the nice and big, and it also has a stand. Okay, this one. It was made for me by a Namibian friend, and it's made from, I can't remember, it's that Namibian well-known, Camille, Camille Dwaran, Camel Thorn Tree. So it is a, a very... Namibian tree, but it's beautiful as well. And you'll see the one behind me is in Pewter. My other friend made it for me. Um, very, very cool. But if we look at the ankh, right, what do we see? A head, arms, and a body, right? So every single person that exists has an electromagnetic field around their body in the shape of the ankh. In other words, your aura is shaped like the ankh. Okay, so when we look at that, and obviously your aura contains within its vibration, every breath you've taken, every moment you've lived, your entire existence that you've ever existence, you know, that the, whatever's in your akasha, your sacred akasha, vibrates within the ankh. Okay, so every person has an electromagnetic field around them, around about three and a half meters, shaped like the ankh, your aura. Okay, that's what it is. So, um, according to Credo Mutwe, I'm just trying to think where to start, but I'm going to say according to Credo Mutwe, okay, um, who was one of South Africa's, he was South African, but Africa's, he was Africa's most highly ordained Sangoma, which is medicine man. Okay, so he was unbelievably, I mean, he, he, was, he knew all of this stuff long before it happened. He literally died a day or two before lockdown began. Um, he, robbed yeah, us. He, <laughs> robbed us. Yeah, well, he said, <laughs> yeah he, knew, he, knew what he, he knew what was up and he said, I'm not going to live in such evil anymore. He, he understood the evil that was coming. But he was amazing. And according to him, which I totally believe, the Ankh is not actually from Egypt, but it was uh, immortalized by the Egyptians. It's actually from sub-Saharan Africa. So it comes from the African continent, and it was named after the original sun god called Mvelinkanji. Okay, that's an African name, Mvelinkanji, who was the original one-legged sun god. For, and the whole of humanity is waiting for the return of Umvelin Kanji, who was the original sun god. So according to our, our African traditions, it actually originates from sub-Saharan Africa, um, as opposed to Egypt, although it was immortalized by the Egyptians. But if you look at the whole African continent, it's so integrated as well. I mean, even if you're looking at the Ethiopian cross and stuff like that, they've got a lot of Ankh symbolism, the whole of Africa really, you know. So really what it is, it's, it's an incredible symbol. It's a symbol of the three main keywords for the Ankh would be protection. So it protects you. It's this auric field around you that is your protection. Okay. Transformation. So in other words, assists you that transforms the negative energies back into creative life force. So because it's the key, uh, it's the Egyptian key of life. So it unlocks, a key unlocks. It's going to unlock the secrets that live within you. It's going to unlock the memories within every cell of your body. It's going to open up the Pandora's box in you as well and allow for the stuff that's not so nice or doesn't feel so good to come up. What is Pandora's box? It's where all the nonsense is, right? But in order for you to heal, you've got to release that which doesn't serve you anymore. So the Ankh enables us to do that. So basically, yes, uh, when we're looking at that, and then, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, at some uh, Protection, a transformation, and resurrection. So let's think about resurrection. You know, when I was 12 years old, I have to tell you, it's the first time I saw the Ankh. I was looking, my mother, is in, she has got, I don't know how many thousands of books. Books were our lives as kids. She's, I mean, every room, just the wall with books. And she had many books on Egypt. And I remember I was 12 years old, and I was looking at one of her books of the symbol of Egypt. 
I mean, of the ank. And I just stared at this thing, and it's like everything inside of me started opening. And since then, I just understood the symbol. When I was in Namibia, <clears throat> maybe 2002, 2003, somewhere around there, I was doing a meditation. Now, please, guys, I don't want to uh, upset any Christians, okay? This is not to upset you, but this is my experience of it, okay? So anyone who knows me knows I've not been into the Christian happy clappies and Bible bashers, so that's never been something um, that has, has been much in my aura. So the one day I was having my meditation, and the next thing in my meditation, I see the symbol of the crucifix coming closer to me. And I'm thinking, weird, but anyway, I'll let it be. And the next minute, as it's here, in a flash of gold, it just transforms into the yank. And I'm going, what? And in that moment, I knew that, you see, for many, look, Look like 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 the Christians have the 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 the, the, the Christian cross. It's a symbol for them that, that that symbolizes something. Whatever your cross symbolizes for you is 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 personal to you, right? Okay. So the uh, you know so whatever that unk was symbolizing for a lot of people, it's suffering. It's Jesus suffering on the cross for three days, bleeding and in pain, and lots of sadness around him. Whatever, so it's the suffering. So the message I got that day was so loud and so clear. It's time for the end of the suffering of the human consciousness. So for the resurrection of the human consciousness. The circle represents the human consciousness, the mind, the way we think. So out of the suffering, we now stand up and we resurrect our thoughts, our perceptions, our understandings. One of, the, one of the key words is also understanding. So we understand things differently now. And then we unlock those inner heavenly gates. And then a new journey begins. There's a lot more to it. And there's a lot more of the little symbolisms that I've given in the website. I, I don't want to go into all of that now. But in a nutshell, that's what it is. So it's a very powerful symbol. Um, in ancient times, very few people were given permission by God to work with the Ankh because it's such a powerful symbol. And, of course, we know why. Um, because in its negative form, okay, everything has an opposite, which is what the dark side has done. It's extremely powerful, as powerful is in its negative form as it is in its positive form, as with everything. But because it's such a powerful symbol, it unlocks the secrets to life. It unlocks the, the journey within. It unlocks the cellular understanding. It unlocks the source within. Think of every cell having a little keyhole in your body. And as you get the ankh there, click, it unlocks, pull, the little keyhole opens, information comes out for you. All right? So now on a negative level, it's done very, very potently. So with that, they usurp power. It's used very much for tools of manipulation. As Stephanie was saying, sex magic, because it, it symbolizes the unity of the masculine feminine, the penis and the vagina, okay? It's the unity of those two symbols together. And then, of course, it's the sun shining over the horizon as well, rooted into the earth. So it's, about all, it's all about connecting. So in its negative polarity, yes, they're going to usurp blood. It's used for a lot of blood rituals. I'll tell you that much. And it is uh, uh, used a lot in sex magic. How? I don't know, and I really don't care to know either. The less I know about that, the better I am. But God told me a long time ago it was used in blood rituals and sex magic. I had no idea what that meant at the time. And only when I started doing the interviews and things I do this in this time now did I hear the word sex magic and I went, okay, penny dropped, I understand it now. But in a nutshell, that's what it is. And so people that have, like I have an onk necklace, just so people understand, it started off as a positive thing. And as I've said, like, take it back, make it positive. For me, the onk is extremely positive. It's extremely um mm -hmm it's been very liberating during this great awakening. And I, and speaking about the positive polarities, it describes the great awakening. We're understanding yeah, totally. more. 
You know, it's like the ankh itself is resurrecting itself almost into human consciousness because we're becoming more aware. We're becoming more. And and that's one thing that I know so many people want to like throw out all these things that the darkness has inverted. But here's the thing. If we threw out everything the darkness had inverted, then we we would have nothing left. So, (laughs) you know, like the pyramid started off as a beautiful, wonderful thing. You know, it started and they inverted. I have a bunch of pyramids, you know, here with me on my desk and it's, and I use them for beautiful, wonderful things. And it's not, it's, it's, um, it depends on the conduit using, using the, using it, but it started off for the light. So I wanted to mention really quickly too. So in my research, of course, I like to figure out the connection of what Christianity did to distort things because I come from that. That's, that's the world I knew. And so I'm trying to pick apart where my roots manipulated stuff. Cause we know that the Christian church is the head of the snake at this point. Um, and I know there's a lot of tension, a lot of triggering with that, with a lot of the viewers, but during my research that I did, cause I did um, a video on this, uh, just a quick little basic video on the uh, probably three months ago. What I learned in my research is the crucifix you see in the Christian church obviously doesn't have that loop. And so what they did is it was the severing of spirit and physical. It disconnects the two. It's like the calcification on your pineal. It's like Mm. the cutting of shaving of your hair, that antenna kind of. It's the, the cutting off of yeah, having your intuition, connection. your mm. connection mm. with God, source, right? Yeah. So I wanted to bring that up because the, in my research, it was like that inversion. It's like, nope, yeah. there's no more loop anymore. It's just a, a cross. Right. And that is it. Yeah. Let's Very see. interesting. But, sorry. Are we yeah, going to talk about this thing, Bryce? Probably. At, uh, probably. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, w- I want to just maybe ask you to bring up that uh, that that uh, uh, pic I sent you. Yes, um, pull it up I'm here. Just, I want to just show you because uh, it's exactly what you said, Stephanie. Um, you know, when it's that that connection to the the human consciousness. You see, when we're looking at that, it's the circle of Willis, right? So over there is the okay. That's not a very clear copy, but but look at if you look at the. At, at the bottom of the brain, okay. So what I'll do, uh, you guys, is I will put this picture at the end of the video when I'm editing, so you can have this picture okay. and you can blow it up and see it. So now, business. if you're looking at the brain there, you're going to look at that. It's known as a circle of Willis. Okay, so yeah, on the left hand side, I don't know where you're looking from. It's my left. You're going to see there's the shape of the eye. Okay, so then you've got your middle, uh, middle cerebral artery. Okay, on the my right okay i don't know what where it is for you then you've got the 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 i think that's the uh, is that the internal carteroid artery and yes. then the uh what is the little one there at the bottom sorry i can't read their notes now i can't even bas- 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 yeah. basular. Basular. basular sorry basular. Ca- uh, artery that's right so now that sits in your brain right now i think stephanie it makes such sense what you're saying there so when our brain and the pineal and the pituitary and the whole endocrine system and everything is operating in full force right in in its natural way the natural connection then would be that uh, you know like like we're seeing here in the circle of water so the unk is a natural part of our makeup if we can see it not just in the brain but in the female organs as well physically and then we can see it in the aura i mean we stand like this with the arms outstretched we look like the unk simple Mm -hmm. Right, the, the the circle is your head. The arms are your body. The uh, sorry, the horizontal bar is your 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 arms, and the vertical bar is your body. So it's like we have that. We we are the ank. We are the key to unlock whatever is inside of us. We are our own holy grail. You see, this shows us. The symbol, the actual unk itself, the symbol, although I love wearing it now, as you can see, I've got it all over and I've had for many, many years. And man, oh man, I have, you know, yeah. when I've been in trouble, suddenly if I just unk myself up, I'll just say to my students, you just unk yourself up. You better believe 
Nothing. Go onk yourself. Go onk yourself. <laughs> Go onk yourself, man. <laughs> Go onk yourself up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's our sappers. We're talking ahead. I mean, Ankoff. Yes, you go Ankoff. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that's what I'm saying. So, how is anything people like this evil? You know, it's the same thing with our chakras. People say chakras. Yeah, the chakras are evil. I mean. Come on, how can a chakra be evil? Yeah. You have chakras in your body. You are made like that. What's been happening, that's the, that's the natural energetic makeup of your body. But just because the dark side has told us that it's evil, chakras are evil because they really don't want us understanding exactly. the power of our body. Exactly. Right? They, don't want us, they don't want us understanding the power of these symbols. Symbols are really just bite-sized chunk things. A symbol is something that explains a form of energy in a bite-sized chunk. So an ankh will explain certain energy in a bite-sized chunk. The symbol of the arm will explain energy in a bite-sized chunk. The symbol of everything else will explain its energy in a bite-sized chunk. So it makes it easier for people to understand when we're talking symbolism. That's all. It's not evil. Nothing is evil. There's nothing evil about it. In fact, it's so beautiful when you understand the healing power, when you open yourself up to, to, to realizing there's so much more to life than what we've been taught. Makes such sense, Stephanie, what you're saying with the unk and the, the actual cross and just that singular um, mm, 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 kind of thought it's process. Rigid. It's, it's rigidity. <clears throat> yes. It's like... That's As opposed to using, it makes such sense. I love that. That so makes did, perfect sense. What triggered, like, triggered my memories, and I loved how you said that, Shanti. This is coming from my experiences in the church when you talk about that, because I, ha I grew up in a Presbyterian church, but I've had the very, very fortunate experience of spending a lot of time in India and working on myself through the Eastern philosophy. So I've lived in both worlds. And the Ankh, even though it's Egyptian, African, that kind of stuff, there, there's a lot of similarities to Eastern, Eastern teaching. Yes. And um, we know that, I know this is going to upset Christians, but again, just do your research, guys. The original Christians practice what we now call Gnostic Christianity. They didn't call themselves Gnostics. That's a Greek word, but it means inner knowing, Gnosis. The, out, the opposite Gnosis. of inner knowing, inner knowing is Edio, which is outer knowing. And the Gnostics believed through the original Christian faith, this was before the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea is what changed everything to what we know today as Christianity. And guys, Constantine was not a Christian. He was very much one of the bloodline controllers, okay? So you just have to understand that when we talk about the Council of Nicaea, there's a lot of nefarious stuff happening. You know, 777 books and we only got 66. It started at the Council of Nicaea. Censorship, major censorship. So if we know the original practicing Christians were practicing this, this, this technique of inner knowing, which is what kind of the onk symbolizes is what the chakra, these are all tools that you use. The chakra system is tools you use to go inside yourself to, to inner know. And through that, through that, that, through that transmission, as Chanti's talking about a lot with moving that energy, you start to develop that stronger connection to source, which in my opinion okay. is what that big, it's that connection to source. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was a child growing up in the church, that was completely stripped from you. You know, that was completely stripped from you. Um, you couldn't do anything about your own karma. You had to rely on this character named Jesus. He was going to. And so what have they done? They've, they've convinced you that this other human, this other person is going to do your work for you, basically. But what happens when you don't actually commit to doing your own karmic work is you stay stunted into a lower vibration, which is where the controllers want you to be. The original teachings of Yahshua, especially if you read Magdalene's gospel, uh, who was, we know, the divine feminine of the Christ consciousness, all, her whole gospel is about the Kalashas. It's about moving through the different obstacles of the ego to get to know yourself, to thine own self be true. And so what this stuff, what this onk and this, and what, Yahshua's original teachings, not the teachings that they created at the Council of Nicaea in the propaganda campaign, but in the original teachings, 
Yahshua Magdalene came to teach you the Christ consciousness. They can't give it to you. They can only give you that any teacher. Shanti is a teacher. I'm a teacher. You can bring a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Give you all the tools. My teacher gives me all the tools, but Pratyahara, I'm the one that actually has to be the alchemist. I'm the one that actually has to do the work and to become that onk. Right. And so, and that's what I think. And actually, Stephanie, when you stepped away for a moment before uh, we started filming, I'd ask Shanti, I wanted to do another video later again about this, about doing the work and what that looks like and how the body and the mind yeah. are very much connected. And once you understand that, once you have that deep understanding, it is the most sovereign and powerful feeling you can have. You know, we've talked a lot about this, Stephanie, about even sicknesses. It's not just something you inherited. Oh, well, fiddly D, this is my body. No. Every time something is off in your body, that's your body showing you when you're out of alignment. I mean, Shanti, you, you beat breast cancer. Yep. Yep. Without falling for the, the Western. And I'm not saying I come from a family of medical doctors. I know there are doctors out there that are really think they're doing the best they can for people. But when we say, oh, I, you know, I, I've had lower back issues my whole life. Well, I know we were talking about this. I know I have had issues with my first chakra. I know I, I know that that's not new to me. That's why I know a lot about doing the pelvic exercises. Well, I, since I've really, really, really engaged in this, I haven't had back pain in a few years now. And mine's starting to go away because I've had back problems since I was probably eight or nine. I pulled my back out for the first time and in the middle of church, by the way, Easter service, wow. Wow. My, my neighbor's little boy. Yep. And I remember pulling it out so badly. And then I pulled it out again in the shower two weeks later. And it was so excruciating. I couldn't move, but that tells me obviously my lot disalignment started at a very very young age and now that i'm addressing it with the pelvic stuff and the the what we're you know you you have me doing um <laughs> with my helping you too now <laughs> yep yep I, I have a whole circle of uh <laughs> people um yeah it still hurts but it's so much better like i like i'm yes. more pliable now like i can move like i can do different motions I have not done since I don't know when. And I used to dance. Like I used to be very athletic. I used to, I mean, I was very, very, um, I could do splits as a kid and, and straddles and, and, and handstands and all the, all that stuff as a child. But as I got older, I became this really, really stiff. Like I could barely move like, like a year and a half ago. I, like I almost the cross is very stiff and the arc is very yeah. stiff. Yeah, curvy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The is yeah, all very, curvy. very curvy, feminine. <laughs> yes. Well, I'll tell you something interesting. Yes. So, I had spinal surgery when I was seventeen years old. Do you know what also happened when I was seventeen years old? My dad you left. Started going through the, uh, what? My dad okay. left. Oh. Um, and you know, the first time I ever studied the chakra system and I read about Muladhar, and I was like, "I'll be damned! I'll be damned! This is why my back went out." Yeah, my father exactly. was a provider and he left. <laughs> and, and my dad passed interesting? away at an early age. So, of course. Yeah, that's your security, right? Yeah. That'll be your security right there because the security, uh, obviously, in a child's life would be the father because even being the provider, protector. But interesting in the workshops I teach, because when I teach the chakra workshops, what I do is I've I align a symbol to each of the chakras that helps to work that chakra. And the ankh is the symbol for the root chakra. So it unlocks the karma. It unlocks the past life experiences you need to understand that you're drawing in because you see another Shantiism, as I like to call it, because this is just my understanding. The root chakra is all about your karma as well. Because when you look at the root chakra, it's the developmental age is 0 to 8 years old. So that's the time a child is at their most vulnerable, at their most help, helpless. They need, they need uh, 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 adults to provide, to protect, to feed, to clothe, get all their nurturing, their security, give them a stable upbringing, what have you, all of that stuff that sets you up for life, basically. And if that 
section of your life is in chaos. Now, remember that your spirit, you might be a child in physical form, but your spirit is eternal and lives on forever and is ancient and a very, very old soul and a very wise being. Your spirit knows exactly what it needs to do before it comes in here and incarnates into your body. So when I see people with a lot of chaos in their first eight years, I know that that is karma they have chosen to balance. So it's unknown. You don't know where it comes from. There's no tangible uh, uh, experience you can put to it. It's just there, but it runs deep, and it's like a root that just carries on forever. Yeah. So when we understand how all the chakras work and the karma and all of that, you then bring that to the fore, and with the ankh, we unlock those understandings. So we get understanding on what it is that we need to know that we brought through. And we also unlock our jail cell because we will only carry karma as much as what we think we need to. When we are ready to release the karma, we unlock that and we let it go. Yeah. And we Absolutely. unlock the door to the answers, the transformed essence, because energy can never be created or destroyed only ever transferred or transformed. And remember, it's a symbol of transformation. So, it, so it, as you unlock the painful memories, maybe, you see a lot of people are scared to do this work because there's too much pain. But I'll tell you now, it's nothing what you think. The, the, what's painful is holding it in. As we unlock it, it's the release. So it releases, transforms, <clears throat> and resurrects the understanding of what the pain was about. So the pain dissolves, but the understanding now is there. And you go, oh, wow. And that's when the, the, the resurrection, the understanding and the resurrection of the consciousness occurs, is that when we understand that my father didn't hate me and he didn't hate me and wasn't doing all those things because I'm so terrible, he hated himself. He had these things happen to himself. Maybe you start understanding his situation, then you can understand and not take it so personally anymore, right? And then you understand why you chose him, because, of course, you had certain pains matching his mm -hmm. that you had to deal with. But as you use him as your mirror, you unlock those past secrets. You read them, you discard whatever you need to, take what you need to, and so the journey continues, the new pathway. Think about this too. I was struck with this as well. Like when, we, when we're talking about the freedom that the Ankh unlocks, when we start to go into ourselves, if we're looking at the Ankh as being that representation, you know, if you think about, if we just take it on a very gross body, as most people like with physical sicknesses, oh, I have this. Oh, I have that. Oh, I've got this. <laughs> you become the victim. You put yourself in victim, poor me. I've inherited this from that person. I, and I've been there. I've done that. I've played that and game. And they get angry. Don't you dare challenge their illness. Oh, I mean, I was rest. born with this. I was born with this. Don't you dare tell me this. How do you know that? I, I've been this, attacked yeah, many you, of them. Yes. Like, and it's like, and but the minute it clicks, the minute mm. it clicks for you that you are the cause of all this shit, even if you are born okay. with it, even, even if, if you, you are born, born with, with it, it, you caused it. And that you would be your this. karma you bring in with you, right? Yeah, but guess what? Yeah, that's if, you're your the karma. if you're the conductor, yes. you yes. can conduct so it as long as, as long as, and it's very important that you don't blame yourself and you say, oh, you see, look what I yeah. did to myself. No. no, very important. You don't take on that, as we say in Afrikaans, yani yamar khat. <laughs> How do I explain what that means? You don't become like Patricia Pathetic, okay, yeah. about like Debbie you Downer. Like this we say Debbie Downer. Yanni Yanni I like that, Patricia, Patricia Pathetic. I've never heard that one before. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, you know, it's about understanding, right? 
My body is designed to heal itself. Why have I created an illness for myself in this life? Why have I chosen? Why have I chosen a generic, a genetic disease, or whatever it is? You see, I don't have to live with it. I'll tell you why. Because you no doubt are a healer. You're a healer. Can I tell you why? Because your body is designed to heal itself. Mm -hmm. So you have come here in this life to show yourself how to heal yourself. You will show yourself that you can do this by tuning in to spiritual and divine intelligence, to your divine creator. You, you stop giving your power away to doctors and nurses and psychiatrists and psychologists and God knows what all else. You own the power that is yours. You own the yeah. magic that is yours. You own that. Health and well-being is your birthright. I don't care. You can be sitting in a wheelchair. It is still your birthright to be healthy in that wheelchair. And it starts with your mind. So my point is that when you understand that nothing is an accident, it's like God sends you to earth and says, okay, there's your toolbox. When you get to earth, unpack it and see what you need to do there. If this is your lifetime where you've got to work with ill health, then Say, okay, God, that's beyond my control. Certain things are beyond my control. If it's a genetic disease, it's beyond your control. Then you go into your spiritual intelligence and you work with that. You support your body in the way you need to, your mind, your spirit, your emotions, okay? If you've been abusing your body <clears throat> and you've created illness because of that, well, your body's very forgiving. Yeah. Or oh, you yeah. can reverse those, that damage by being beautifully loving, gentle, and adoring yourself, supporting yourself, um, understanding that you are designed to heal yourself. You have that power within you. Everyone does. And I'll tell you, because when I first realized that my lower back issues were coming from my Moladara, the first thing I did was I stopped blaming my dad. I stopped blaming him. And I said, I'm going to take risk. Now it's my turn. It's my turn. I have to now take responsibility for what I'm holding on to. But then over the course of the years, back in 2016, I actually broke my sacrum. And even that in itself is still my body saying, yeah. allowing. So obviously I agreed to let that happen. And let me tell you guys, that was when I had already started to do the work, but that was when I was like, oh, hell no there's still work that needs to be done. That's what this broken sacrum is telling me. There's still work that needs to be, that I need to do. No one can do it for me. I have to do it myself. And when I, when that happened, it was so painful. Oh my God, it was so painful. When that happened though, working through that, I was on my yoga mat every single day. I did not, I was modifying a lot of things and I was having to use props and I was having to have help, but I was on that mat every single day. I ended up, I went to India where I was still healing to work with my teacher there. I went through, it was painful, but I, that was probably the most transformative time of my life was that those few years where I was recovering from that break. And during those few years, something interesting also happened. My, my, actually the last time I was in India, I got a really, got really sick, a really high fever. And it, it, it eventually it was apparently because I ingested some human feces, which is very normal in India. But what I saw then yeah, that I didn't need to know that. That was something that my mother made me go to the American doctor, and, I, and then I got a help call from the health department. It was just, it was kind of funny. But what, how I see that now was that was my body, that was my higher self allowing my body to finally burn through everything yeah, I had fleshed perfect. out through my work. And so it was necessary for me to have to get that fever because after that happened, I was, I was telling you, I haven't had. My, my core, my lower belly, especially has never been this strong. I haven't had back pain in years now. I feel actually, I was thinking about my dad last night. Cause I don't have a, we're, I don't have a relationship with him. And I was like, you know what? I've learned so much from him as a dad, even though he's not in my life, he's given me the opportunity to have more life lessons than some people's fathers who are in their lives. And mm -hmm. so even, so now I see this as a blessing. And I have a great stepdad. I have a wonderful stepdad. You know, like, like how fortunate am I that at 39, I feel very secure. I've been able to work through this. Like I, as my friend Cindy says, like I, my, my job is to burn through comp karma, not create it. You know, like how, how much have I worked through, you know, and how, what a blessing that is. And when you realize when you make, when that clicks with you, when it finally clicks with you, 
that everything happening to you is because of you, not in a bad way, but because you literally conducted it. Your higher self, your soul, whatever was like, this is what we're going to do. This is, as our Emmy calls it, this is your master class. This is the class you're signing up for in this life. And when you start to, when you realize that, it's like you can take the bull by the horns. All of a sudden, you're not the victim anymore. You're not the poor, pathetic victim. That's just so, you know, we all know those people. That's all. Something's always wrong. Something's all I can't. I, they have an excuse for everything. Poor me. All of a sudden. Some people literally have an addiction to that mentality, too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's that overactive pain body that is just, it's like that sloth type energy. It just wants to be miserable and slow moving and just everything it just wants to focus on everything that is bad in life and yeah it so it, it's all ego based though you know all of this is ego based you know ego is not just trying to be bigger and better and smarter ego you know there's there's this um, um <clears throat> you kind of get the the covert ego as well you know that stays and this poor me you know, this poor me mentality is also ego. That's ego inverted, you know? Yeah. So we've got to find that balance where we step back, move forward, take a breath. You know, Paulo Coelho has a beautiful, um, I don't know if you guys have read The Worry of Light by Paulo Coelho. And in there he has a beautiful, he, or like the whole book is just like one page little, say stories, maybe one or two pages, you know, but. And um, he talks about the worry of light, who understands that there's a time to move forward and then there's a time to step out of the battlefield, catch your breath, refresh, mm -hmm. take a breath, and then you step on again. You know, there's a time where you just step back and you refrain and you just breathe and you refuel and you rejuvenate and you recalibrate in life. And that's the way that I think we need to do things. You know, we've got to listen to our bodies. Our bodies are always talking to us. They're we, always telling us. We do that in the Mysore room in our lineage of, of, of yoga. It's so the, the adjustments that the teacher gives you can be very intense. <clears throat> we call them cranks. You get cranked. Um, and and um, what will happen typically as a Mysore teacher is you will work because there are some patterns that the adjustments help you kind of break through in your body. What happens is typically, and we know this as teachers, like I'll work with a student every single day, adjusting the same posture, same posture, same posture for a week or two. And then I step away for a couple of weeks and it's, and it's allowing that all that work to calibrate into the system. And it's the same physically as it is emotionally. When you do step out into the, the, the med tent for a while from the battlefield and allow it all to kind of like settle into your system all the information learned. And that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite things about the Bhagavad Gita, um, which my favorite commentary on the Bhagavad Gita is this Paths to God by Ram Das. But I'm, and I'm going to totally paraphrase it. But there's this part in the Bhagavad Gita. You know, the whole story is this guy, Arjuna, and he's on the battlefield. And he, it's, it's very apropos for what's happened to us in this, this lifetime. Mm -hmm. Um, where Arjuna is standing on the battlefield and he's looking across the field and he's looking at people in his life that he has loved his teacher, his family, and he's got to mm. go to like war with them, like till the death. And he's having this moment of like, I don't want to do this. And so the whole Bhagavad Gita is the avatar of, of God. And this is Krishna, which is the Christ. That's the Christ. Govinda is a baby. He was called. And he's having this conversation with Arjuna. And you would think when you, when you're new to spirituality, that'd be like, it's okay, buddy, just come on out. It's fine. But no, Krishna's like, toughen up buttercup you're a warrior you got to go do this you know it's like it's it's like you you got to go use your sword like you know like yeah up, you know and so then i think sometimes we need that in, in, especially in the western world because we've been so i mean i know every culture has been conditioned to certain things but i think especially in the american culture and a lot of the western culture it's this conditioning where if something is uncomfortable it's wrong and poor me i'm a victim but I always have to think of that Arjuna, that Krishna, where he's like, in the most loving way, like, toughen up, buttercup. Let's do this. Let's roll. This is your, this is your path. You signed up to be a warrior in this life. So be a fucking warrior. Yeah, you know? exactly. You got to exactly. do it. I mean, how many of us? Is, 
I want to just check with a with a with a Bhagavad Gita as well, you know. But if you also take it more symbolically as well, you know, I think the Bhagavad Gita is really about fighting with yourself. Yeah, oh, you absolutely, one hundred percent. Yes. Yeah, I love yeah. the Bhagavad Gita. And again, guys, honestly. For those of for those of us who think that these things are evil and you're gonna get now munched in by the jaws of hell because of it, please, it is such beautiful teachings. I mean, the Bhagavad Gita is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And just like the Bible, it tells stories, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's a beautiful depiction uh from the Hindu, uh from the Hindu faith. Mm -hmm. on how they see the world and how they understand spirituality. And it's very, very beautiful. It's very internal. It's, and that's what uh, Richard Freeman, uh, in one of his talks, he spoke about the Bhagavad Gita this long before the Great Awakening, where he was saying, every day you step on your yoga mat, you are Arjuna. You are Arjuna because you're the one dealing with your own inner conflict and all the friction that comes up absolutely. within your practice from moving your body in particular patterns and releasing information <clears> that's been held. And you are you know, how many times on your mat, Shanti, do you get to a posture and you go, I got to go to the bathroom now. I got to go run away now. I got to go I gotta <laughs> wash the dishes. All of a sudden, I need to wash the dishes. All of a sudden, I got to go do the laundry. You know? And you have got itch. And suddenly, yes. my, my pinky starts aching or something. It's like, what are you talking about? You know, your pinky. But with yoga, you need your pinky to have a Hmm. Well, I don't I, think so. No. <laughs> I see it in the Mysore because you know, Mysore, in our lineage, we don't leave the class. They have their series, they practice, and we walk around and work with people individually. So the student has more of a propensity to like check out, and I'll see it. I'll see it with the students. It always comes with a particular posture for different people. It's different. Where all of a sudden they start picking their toenails, they just stop practicing and start picking the. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah exactly or suddenly there, there's a there's a there's a piece of cotton coming out of my shirt or something and i've got to fix that and then i wasn't gone so far <laughs> what have i ripped <laughs> or all of a sudden that, and we always laugh always laugh because in my room people walk out looking like albert einstein because it's such a hot humid room but and nobody can, you know you're so focused on your work and it's so early in the morning but all of a sudden like a certain student will have to do a posture and also really care about what their hair looks like you guys kind of triggered my mind for a second there i got a realization about myself with my newfound working out so I, a lot of times if i'm doing the pelvic tuck suddenly i gotta pee really bad well sometimes in the yoga room they don't have to pee they just they, it's an avoidance they're trying to, uh, it's, yeah. it's your subconscious, yeah. like your, your body. And I do it myself. Like, that's why I'm laughing at myself. Like I get to Kapotasana, which is a deep back bend, And all of a sudden it's direly important that I go change the laundry. You know, like all of a sudden it's like direly important that I wash a dish. <laughs> exactly. And so it's not like it's my like subconscious, the, like trying to get out of. Policy. Distraction. Yeah. Total distraction. It's so insane how the mind will try and distract you. And I understood that with Vipassana, you know, mm -hmm. sitting in a 10 day silent retreat where you can't look at anyone, you not, you can't talk, you can't write, you can't read, you can't uh, light a candle, nothing. You are just, you can't wear jewelry, nothing. So for 10 days you are, it's a, it's a beautiful space, though. but you'll be sitting and suddenly the ear starts itching and the whole thing with Vipassana is to transcend, you know, the, the, because then you start seeing how, <laughs> how the mind uh, tries to distract you from going within. Yeah. And, and, you know, not just that, but it's like, we will be sitting and people say, well, I don't have time. I say, yes, you do have time. You've got to make it. Yes. But the phone always rings switch it off. Mm -hmm. We always create distractions for things with uh, that we avoid trying to do. And yeah. we always say, well, it's always someone else's fault. And I'm always getting, hey, let me tell you, I know all about that. I see to this day, I've been on this path professionally for 20 years. I see every day how I can distract yes. myself. Oh, God. <laughs> and I do it so well and willingly. <laughs> And that's why we're laughing is because I, I, I know, like when I do it myself, I know why I'm doing that. Like my, all of a sudden I'm like, Bryce, 
get back on your effing mat. Like, <laughs> your laundry can wait. Like, you're avoiding this. And I had a friend once that was so funny with you because the postures were in for five breaths. Like, that's what, like 10 seconds? And she was like, why don't I just hit it and quit it? Like, that's what I learned from college anyway from the frat boys was hit it and quit it. Like, why can't I just get to this posture, hit it and quit it? Like, do it, get out. But I create this whole drama around this you know, particular it. posture that literally takes 10 seconds to do. Like literally. Yeah. <laughs> and so when you start to unravel the craze, sometimes you go, oh, yeah. those are, that is my monkey. That is my circus. Like sometimes when that craziness yeah. starts to unravel and you understand like why, but sometimes you don't know your subconscious knows more or is feeding more information to your conscious mind than I think you're even aware of half the time because the subconscious is feeding the conscious mind. Ooh, now's a really good time to go to the bathroom. Now's a really good yeah. time to go fix exactly. my hair. It's because there's something intense. There's some trauma there that you You're don't trying want to do. avoid. Yeah. Because it's uncomfortable. And the thing is, recognizing that is such a beautiful thing. That's the whole thing is to recognize that this is me standing in my own way. You know, when someone says, get out of your own way, this is what they mean. You understand that your thoughts, your own actions, your own distractions create i mean i could have such a good laugh at myself thank gosh i've become my own best friend because if i i would be really mad at myself 10 years ago when i discovered these things about now i just laugh i go oh my gosh you become clever you're becoming too clever for your own good chantal okay <laughs> Let's I just laugh make sure you're that again like i'm like you're really you're still doing this like 15 years later you're still trying to like change your laundry before capo tasana like come on girl like get like uh, Tough it up, buttercup. Here we go. You know, but it's, it's when you, but you're right. When you do realize that that's what's happening, you, you yeah. have power over that. And it's like, it's Absolutely. like back with that. Like, when, when I've got this problem, I've got that problem. Okay. Well take those reins then and work through it. And then once you start to work through the emotional, everything else starts to unlock for you. And that's the beauty of exactly. back to the, that's the beauty of the awk is that you, that's the plot twist. That's the PowerPoint. It's all you. Exactly. It's all exactly. you. Nobody else. Exactly. You are that powerful source of light. You are that. You are the onk. Go onk yourself. You are the holy grail. Exactly. Look at you. It's it's a little man. Yeah. It's you. It's you. It's the, it's you. it's it's your energy that radiates out of you. And you know what I also say? It's like when you look at it, it's like an angel. When you look at it, it's like when I work with the kids. And I say, you, it's like your little angel around you, because when you draw it, it's like with the wings. When you make the arms, you make a nice little wings, you know? So, of course, with our kids as well, we, we, we show them in all these um, little picture forms how it works and why it works. But it's super powerful. It's a really, really, really cool symbol. And I want to say, if anyone wants to maybe just uh, check out my website, I've written Put quite it. a bit about it there. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see what yeah. it is so ladies let's do a follow-up then and i'm gonna i'm gonna leave the comments up on my channel for this video if i do get any violent comments from any um any type of person regardless of whether they're chris or not i will block you no there's no time for that um we're trying to grow and heal and learn if this is not your cup of tea fine then don't watch just don't watch you know um allow other people the space to, to grow but um what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a follow up with both you girls, maybe next week or something where we can talk more about the chakra system again, more about connecting to the, cause as Wes, I, and I will say, and Chanti, you probably understand what I'm saying. I've, I've been do myself. I've been in this game now for 15 years. And so I kind of forget that there's peace. There's some stuff people don't know or haven't been taught yet about the connection, especially from the Western world between the mind body connection and some very fundamental stuff. And I get these emails and these comments. I'm like, Oh my God, we need to cover this because I totally forget that people don't have this in their normal everyday life. How amazing would life would, be, would life be if in Sunday schools, for example, from the time their children, the Sunday school teachers are teaching them about self healing. The yes, real teaching exactly. of Yahshua. The real teaching. I think that's going to be a thing in the future. I mean, Absolutely. that's a good humanitarian project if you're well versed in this and you have years of experience because things don't just come online. No. Well, you have to work with children. Through. You do sun kids with the children where you work with, you start to work with children on this stuff from a very young age about having that power. They're, they're the yeah. best students because they're open. <laughs> I'm telling you, you must see, we've been now the last four months, we've been doing regular online workshops for the kids. 
through some kids. Oh my, you must see these kids. It's just beautiful to watch. And you know, they're regular, so they come back. And there's a little uh, 13 year old boy on there who's just doing amazing stuff. 11 year old girl. I think the youngest one is seven. That comes. So they, I mean, they just love it. They, it's the best thing for them. So we I meditate. Mean, yeah. Imagine if those patterns were ingrained in you from the ages of zero to eight versus what we have in the Western world. It's all your fault. And if you don't believe in this external thing, then you're going to hell. If you don't have this and, you know, instead of we learn like, no, actually you create your own hell. And yeah, yeah. Well, you got Yashua That's actually, what hell is. It's self-creation. Isn't, isn't there, there, there's a beautiful uh, saying by, uh, from Shakespeare that says, um, hell is empty because the devils are all here. Isn't that so true? Mm. I love it. Yep. Hell's empty because the devils are all here. I think we definitely know what that means. Those freaking devils are yeah. alive and well. <laughs> well. What's that? There was one Christopher Marlowe play. I can't remember the name of it, but this guy like sells his soul to the devil to become rich, powerful, and famous. I guess now we know that was a fiction. <laughs> but the time that he's supposed to like go to go die and go to hell, he's sitting there and the demon comes up to collect his soul and the clock strikes midnight and nothing happens. And the guy looks at the demon and he's like, I'm totally paraphrasing. So I can't remember the name of the play. He goes, I, I thought I was going to hell. And the demon kind of smirks and says, you're already in it. <laughs> tell exactly. you the truth, don't they? You're already in it. Yeah. yeah you're you're always getting in it. Doesn't get worse than this, buddy. Don't no worry. You just, <laughs> you're already like, in it, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I so, always say time and time again on my channel, like, and I know this isn't original. I'm not saying I'm the original owner of saying this, but the biggest, the, the biggest prison is without a key. It's your mind. It's your person yourself. But you don't need the key when you are the ank, right? Yeah. That's your key. Yeah. Unlock yourself exactly. out of that jail cell. And yeah. yeah. Only you as the individual can do that. No one can do it for no you. No one can do it for no you. And that's what the church button. confuses you and thinks that somebody else has to do it for you. Yashua mm -hmm. never said that, guys. He was a teacher. No. They, they called him teacher. They didn't call him God. They called him teacher. And yeah. Magdalene was part of that as well. Read her. Her gospel is all about breaking through the restraints of the mind. Right. This is the yeah. original teachings of the of the Christian faith. The original teachings was the rising of Christ consciousness, the Kundalini. Yes. Yes. Exactly. And so, that's why they will us. It's so evil and it's so bad. And they will because these are the things as you expand and as your consciousness expands, your frequency rises, which means your body changes at frequency and then the kundalini which is the christ consciousness which is what they call that's the energy that sits coiled up in the tip of your spine yep. i mean your 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 body your kundalini knows when your body is ready for transformation right so your body will um give off that prepared vibration kundalini fires the codes and wah, up your spine through the through the brain and back into the cells of your body where yes. deep transformation but occurs. that doesn't happen all at once does it not what well, can that? in prativa it can but it's rare it's very 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 rare it usually happens through phases and i was telling you the other yes. day stephanie actually there's quite a few books out there where they warn you about the dangers of it, how you trying to, because a lot of people, I think, want it to happen all at once. You see, can I just say something here? Anything that is forced is dangerous. Mm -hmm. Now, any force, now a lot of people will go to the masters in India and sit at their feet and want to third eye Kundalini activation. So they sit there thinking, and of course you can force it, like anything you can force, right? But the only time it's dangerous is when it's forced. Yeah. When you, when, when you yourself progress at the speed you are meant to, mm -hmm. like unlocking cell by cell, layer by layer, bit by bit, then your body is prepared. Some people don't even know. I remember exactly the day I had my Kundalini activation. It was my first yoga class 
and I did a back bend for the first time since I was eight or nine or ten. I felt it, it almost felt like I'd peed my pants. I'm yes, telling you that. Heat. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, uh, so, yeah. I get that in back bending too. So it wow. went yeah. completely up my spine. Yep. I yep. felt it because I'd been talking about it before that. And also Kundalini, when you often say symbolically, you're going to maybe dream about snakes, see snakes, uh, see movies with snakes, whatever, but snakes will come into your your vibration into your aura and it's not a bad thing okay it's they've inverted that thing. too guys they've inverted that too so yeah yes, snakes are very good things actually okay yeah. so then that so then that's what i'm saying sudden. yeah so then when you when it that's when it that's when it's it's no problem i had no problem it was like i'll tell you i was on a high for about three days after that. Yeah. I felt like I was floating. So for me, my Kundalini activation happened of itself by itself. It came through years of spiritual practice mm -hmm. um, so of understanding yeah. what God was about, not judging. Um, oh no, I, okay, I said not judging. Um, I did judge a lot, certain things, definitely. But for me, it was really an understanding. I, it was the passion in me, the understanding, the knowledge. And when I started yoga, and I started going to yoga because I then wanted to integrate this awareness into the body at cellular level. So that was my first yoga class. And I did a, a back bend. I mean, I was in my 40s, late 40s already. And um, I hadn't done that since I was seven or eight at school, you know. And I just pushed myself up in my back bend, the uh, full wheel pose, they call it. Um, Chakrasana, I don't know what you guys call uh, it. Uh, uh, well, in Ashtanga, Chakrasana is flipping backwards. Um, so doing okay. a back handspring to Chaturanga. Uh, Urdhva Dhanurasana. Okay, yeah. So, so for me, so for me, that was that, you know, that that's when it happened. I didn't go mad. Some people feel like they're going crazy. Some people have a hectic burning. But that is because, in my opinion, they are not ready. It's a forced activation. Yeah. And they'll sit with the masters, who, in my opinion, should never be forcing that to begin with. Any spiritual master, any spiritual teacher should know you can't force anything. You take a person on their journey. A good healer will know. You show them where to look, but you don't tell them what to see. Yeah, they will find it for themselves. So that's that's what happens. The Kundalini like, activation is a very beautiful thing. Exactly it's fifth dimension. Experience. Yeah, it's and like I, your DNA reconnection. It's yeah, like a DNA. I will tell reconnection. you because of my back bending issues. Because my back issues for a long, I actually punched a teacher coming out of Kapotasana once a deep back bend. But that's the beauty, right? So if I had avoided the work, I never would have had that experience. And back bending yeah. now for me is the freest. I still get trepidation sometimes and my my old patterning comes back but that is where i spiritually find the freest liberation i was in back bending but that's where the most trauma was so where the most trauma is is usually like the pot of gold at yeah. the end of the rainbow that's where the most power like because you think about that trauma is just held energy once that energy is as you say uh shani is transmuted and transformed all of a sudden that energy then shoots and i have the same every time i do a deep back bend now i have the same thing it's like this energy that comes all it's hard to explain it's coming yeah. all the way up through from basically from my crotch which is where kundalini lies yeah. and it happens kundalini every yeah. single day in my practice and it's the and you feel i'll be in a deep back then catching my ankles and all of a sudden i'll just feel this like vibrational force that comes through me and it's happened now for a few years every day on my mat and so i absolutely but yes there are books written by people who had a kundalini activation very quickly and it's they write about it being the most traumatic thing they've ever been through right and yeah. so we have we have to be very and yes it needs to pratibha means a flash of illumination in sanskrit pratibha flash of illumination <laughs> but you do and like you said shanti you had had years of mental preparation emotional preparation before even integrating the body so you were ready um it's just yeah. kind of like 
You know, like a lot of us as kids learned how to swim because our parents just threw us into the deep end. In fact, I posted to me on Twitter of like us at childhood memories and it was a dad throwing a kid into the pool and the, and the kid was like, dad, I can't swim. And dad was like, well, not with that attitude. You can't. But a lot of us had that. But there's a trauma response to that, too, where you panic. And so you have to think with like that Kundalini activation, if you're not prepared for it, if you, it's like any type of conditioning, yeah. right? It's, you're not going to like decide today. I'm not going to sit here and go, you know, what? I think I'm going to become a long distance runner and then go put my running shoes on and try to run a marathon. That's ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. Exactly. And a lot of times I think people do get into, and we can go more into this in our next episode, but I do think sometimes people get so caught up with the sixth and seventh chakra, that obsession that they do become almost delirious and getting delusional about it instead of actually realizing that that is taking, that is a too active and they need to come down into that Muladhara again. Exactly. So there are a lot of pitfalls to this. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the, it's the, um, the, 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 the two way flow of the energy. It's always going to flow two ways. Yeah. And that's so, the, that goes into the power of the nostrils, which we can also talk more about as well, which I know, I mean, I don't think most Westerners know. Do you, did y'all talk about that in medicine, Stephanie, about the power of the different nostril, the left to the right and how they go down the body and with this. No, we can, we can talk Nothing. more about that too. Cause that's super, cause that actually. None of what we're talking about. Nope. Yeah. It's that's all on the diseases and how to treat the diseases with pharmacia. The sorcery so that you can't heal. Yeah. 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 We can talk more about that too, with the two, the left and the right. And the, that's our two nadis with Shashumna, which Shashumna is the cord that goes up the spine, which is what uh, Kundalini goes up, um, which I know we're going to be talking about. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to plug our Monday episode on Aquarius Rising Africa, because we are going to be talking about Isis and Osiris. Speaking of the Ankh, oh, yeah. the Ankh is a part of that too. Yes, and we're I, all Egypting out at the moment. We're all we're, Egypting out. I think we're all <laughs> descendants of Egypt anyway, so <laughs> we're just going back home. Exactly. <laughs> we're going back home. Um, you know, and I, and I found something interesting, which we'll talk more about on, um, on Monday, uh, the obelisk, which we've been told was Osiris's penis, but there's another perception of the obelisk as well. And that the obelisk actually represents Shashumna, the nodding yeah. in the spine, the rising of consciousness, the Christ consciousness. Right. So of course they would. A lot of people are dwelling on how the dark side has been using this. And we're not going back to the roots of where it originally came from. And that's something I'm noticing within the truth or community that's not being talked about. So I think yeah. it's really amazing and it's a good opportunity to kind of get this information out because no, these things actually come from the light, but the devil can't create. So had to use them. Invert. Yeah, exactly. I mean, piggyback. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have all tor tor tons of obelisks all over Atlanta because we know LOL Tartaria, like <laughs> that shit was here before. Um, and I used to get like gruffy when I'd see it when I first started to wake up to the, the dark side. But now when I see him, I'm like, oh yeah, I have a Christ consciousness in the base of my spine that runs up my spine. And I have Shashumna because I am a spark of, of God. And so is everybody else. And, you know, and so, so we're going to talk more about that guys. And we're going to talk about war Isis and Osiris siblings. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about all sorts of stuff about the, uh, the beautiful story of Isis and Osiris, not the one, not the convoluted story that they have convinced us is, is negative and wrong and bad. So, well, thank you ladies so much. I could literally talk about this all day and it's 11, 11 here right. in America, guys, powerful number 11, 11. So, all right. Five, 11 then. here. So <laughs> we'll just five, 11 out of here. <laughs> <laughs> go onk yourselves now, everybody go onk yourselves. So Anko, just Anko. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank all you right, guys thank you. Thanks for being on Love your you show guys all. if you have any questions I'm just gonna say that. if you have any questions about the onk about self-healing Isis and Osiris anything you want us to cover ask away in the comment section we love you guys and we'll Me talk too. to you soon lots of love bye, bye.